And I, w- <clears throat> I was so nervous to open for you at the Paramount. I was like, oh, my God, I did so many deep breathing after. <laughs> Are you kidding? No, I swear to you. I swear to you. This is I told you, Sal. Uncut. <laughs> I told you, Sal. Everybody like, loves you. Go, 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 go. <laughs> hey, Anthony, where'd you get this podcasting stuff from? It fell off the back of a truck. So I, <laughs> Vanessa is Vanessa Rachi, by the way. Welcome to the yeah. Breaking Bread <laughs> podcast. We're, we're, we're going to cut it in. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. We're going to be cut in nice. Anthony, okay. do you want to do this intro? I did, the, I did yesterday. Did you? Yeah, I did. Welcome to the Breaking Bread podcast. I'm back with my co-host, Sal The Voice. How you doing? And today we are here with Vanessa Rachi. Ciao. Thank you for oh, having me. Of course. Vanessa, we were talking about how you are one of the best female jazz singers out there, Ooh, in my opinion. So nice. And, and I got a, <laughs> I got a very, I have a very uh, respected opinion amongst my peers. Uh, you do. Yeah. No, nobody gives a shit. What no, I, have to I, say. I respect your opinion. <laughs> I, I want to know yeah. how because Vanessa, you're not, you and I are about the same age. So how do you, <laughs> how does someone so young, have have been bitten by this bug like how did that how did that happen yeah it, it, we have similar stories yeah. um where i grew up in westchester but a lot of people think that means i grew up fancy but no uh, not the fancy area of westchester <laughs> i grew up in the blue collar italian section <laughs> um and my grandparents lived with me in the basement apartment my grandmother died when i was very young but my grandfather lived to like 102 wow. so he became like my best friend i loved him Aww. we had like very similar personalities and he would call me his little celebrity and uh he used to make me like frittata for italian class and pick me up from school and he would he would come to school in his car blasting malavemana and it'd be like Vemina, da, da, da. i'm like a oh, grandpa's here i gotta go <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so that's how i learned all that music because I grew up living with him, and he would play Dean Martin, Connie Francis, Lou Monti, Louis Prima, et cetera. And that's how I just learned it when I was really young. So the old soul so. bug is real here. Yeah. Yes. The old soul bug is very real right now. Yeah. yeah. Very Anthony so. Anthony has a very similar relationship with his grandfather. Literally, really? it's identical to what you just oh, said. I Picking me up from school every day, bringing me out. He would take me for pizza. That's why I was chubby. <laughs> Pizza or like Wendy's, the same exact thing every day, like, you know, typical old school Italian man. I was chubby, too, because it's all about like you you eat more if you love them. Right. Yeah. So (laughs) do you don't like my pasta? You didn't eat anxiety provoking. Yes. Anxiety. Exactly. What's the matter? You don't love a grandma. Right. So I would eat three bowls of pasta and I thought I was a good girl, but I was a chubby good girl. (laughs) 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 I was like, look how good I am. <laughs> there's a there's a funny story that I have that I always tell everyone. I think I told you yesterday. Um, my um my no no the one thing about him he's he's blunt. He doesn't care. He's blunt as could be. If your feelings are hurt, it's way too bad. And when I was young, he'd be like, "Oh, you're getting fat." Like he would just <laughs> tell me. And, and as like a kid, I would be like upset. But then my <laughs> no no would put me in the corner and feed me Stella Dora cookies. Oh my! And be God. like, "It's okay. It's oh okay. My- Joy me." It's It's like an emotional abuse cycle, right? (laughs) It's like a vicious cycle. No, it's like you said, like, I wonder why I have problems with food. I like when food gets put in front of me, it's very hard for me to resist. We all do. I have to tell my husband, like, don't buy it. Don't put it in the house. Don't put it on the table because I'll eat it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, I listen. It's it's uh, it's part of the fabric of who we are. Yep. You know, that's what I every time someone would say, you know, oh, wow, you, you lost so much weight. And I'd be like, but. It's okay that you were heavy. It's it's who we are. Yeah. I said, are, are we? I've been to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> They're all skinny. Yeah, they they look like puppies fighting under a blanket. I don't know. I don't know Literally. about that. Yeah, Literally. yeah. So, but I have to say, like, I'm lucky that I carry my weight all down here, which is kind of it's trending, right? Like yeah. the bud badonka donk, and yeah. I have all these big the <laughs> I, I, Does that date me? All about <laughs> you? No, no. I love it. No, in the, in the words of Megan Trainy, you could say you're all about that base. It's all about the base. That's right. No trouble. And then I have the big dresses that like hide it. Yeah. It works for me. <laughs> My anaconda don't. Is that what that song's uh, about? 
<laughs> What's that? All about that bass. Is yeah. The butt? I didn't even know that. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. She said, my I'm mom. I'm bringing booty back. Yeah. Oh. Da, 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 wow. Me and so Roll were equally <laughs> flabbergasted because I didn't yeah. know it was about I money. love Megan Trainor. And she Trainor. says, yeah, my, my mama, she told me, don't worry about your side. Oh. Said, boys need a little more booty to hold at night. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I love oh. it. Oh, there we go. I love it. <laughs> that was very good. Oh, thank you. That's my Megan Trainor impression. <laughs> Speaking of love. You you know obviously you grew up with this music and you mm-hmm. fell in love with it because you you associate it with the happy memories you have with your grandfather yeah which is a big part of it I uh, you it's not but it's not like you you know obviously you grew up a little musical right in school was it was it something that was that was part yeah. of your your early upbringing yeah it's so funny because no one in my family sings or plays an instrument yeah me too uh, so it kind of came out of nowhere. Um, but I started when I was four years old, Whitney Houston was really popular and I started singing the greatest love of all. And my parents were like, what? A four year old is singing this song. And I was like, I believe the children are future. And I just like <laughs> sing the whole song. And they were like, oh, she's got something. And they put me into theater. And then I started yeah. doing professional theater and yada, yada. So you were doing professional theater while you were still of school age. Yeah, I was wow. age 12. Yeah, I got wow. paid, paid to perform, which was great. Yeah. What was the first show you were in? Um, the Christmas Carol, was that it? I think it was the Christmas Carol. Wow. And I they had like a hydraulic on the stage. <laughs> and so I had to come up from underneath the stage. I was supposed to be the angel singing. And I was so terrified I was going to fall every night. Because they didn't have me in a harness or anything. I was just standing there as the thing went like <laughs> up. <laughs> was, so, so oh, wow. that's It was cool. I that could see cool. you being in Greece. I could completely I wa- see you being I w- in Greece. I was, you were in uh, Greece? Maudie. Yeah. See, I, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can completely Freddie, see you love, being in Greece. I miss you more than... <laughs> <laughs> I'm obsessed with Greece, by the way. I mean, really? Completely. Oh, me too. I love it. Rosemary knows this firsthand. Me too. Me too. Yeah. What was your What was your favorite musical that you were ever in? Um, I have to say Phantom because I did win a Helen Hayes oh. Award for my role in Chris- as Christine and the music. Oh, is you played so Christine? Yeah. Wow. I had a big wig. But <laughs> I, I did a competition where I had to be Raul. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's so cool. Christine and Raul. We I'm lost. We can do all I ask of you. Oh. Oh, I'm lost. I'm just gonna go like this. I, like I know. I'm lost. I just became. Oh. I just became five percent more. You know. Oh Christine and Raúl. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I left. I left my bandana at home <laughs> or a scarf. You got one in the back. Oh boy. Oh my god. One thing. One constant theme of this podcast that Sal and I have talked about with pretty much everyone so far is uh, everyone is completely self-made. Like, you know, there is some story where, like, you know, I quit this job or I took this risk. I took this chance for something that we, like, believe in that probably would be, like, it probably would be, like, considered, like, a risk to most, like, Italian parents. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like a big jump. A leap of faith. Yes. Yes. And it's so funny you say that because my story, my story is very much related to that. Um, So... I grew up singing my whole life. I did professional theater at the age of 12. I won a Helen Hayes at the age of 18. I was always getting like lead roles in every play, yada, yada, going on auditions. And then um, when I told my parents I wanted to be a singer for a living, they said, oh, no, 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 that's not a real job. That's just yep. a hobby. Yeah. And yep. I was like, it was kind of like the record scratch. Like, wait, 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 what? What do you mean? Like, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> <laughs> and so they're like, go to school for business. They saw the people in the fancy cars in Westchester worked in marketing and business. And they're like, so do that. Because then you'll have you'll be secure. You won't have to depend on a man kind of thing. You could walk right into Audi of Larchmont. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So th- my mom was like, oh, you should just work at PepsiCo one day because PepsiCo was in purchase. And it's so funny. I wound up fulfilling that dream. And I went to school for marketing, worked my way up, became like a marketing executive at PepsiCo. I worked there for 11 years. I had a team of people underneath me and everything. Wow. Wow. And, yeah. And I had like giant bonuses and my parents were so proud and and there, but there was always like something missing. Like every time I communicated my bonus to my parents, they were like, "Yay!" And I was like, "Yay!" But something in me was like, "Ah, oh, but that's it's still not fulfilling." Like it's just I know this sounds terrible, but it's just money, you know. Right? And no, it sounds, doesn't sound terrible. Wow. I don't you know? think it sounds terrible. You worked at PepsiCo for eleven years out of college. Yes. Do you, so do you yeah. age in reverse? Like, yeah, is that I a? Do. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> You you spent yeah. eleven years at this job. There had to be something you enjoyed about it. I mean, I was good at it. 
the money was great and I was using the money to fund my first album. Right. So like So you were still you always had one foot in yes. the in the water. I always continued to perform simultaneously and I didn't tell my day job about my night job and I didn't tell my night job about my day job because I was worried they neither would take me seriously. Like Batman. That's that's yeah. true cuz there there is crossover with that. So that was yeah. very smart of you to do. So I kind of hit it and um, I wound up recording my first album, Italiana Fresca, in 2017 in honor of my grandfather, and it reinvented Italian classics that he taught me with uh, modern jazz arrangements. That's when I first met you in Rochester, I think. Yeah. Uh, so you were, you were just fresh on the scene. I was fresh on the scene. That is incredible. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate well, it. Well, I mean, that. Imagine, imagine having stepped away from something for so long. And being so, and this is how you could tell. This is how this is how you could tell. It's not. I'm not just gassing her up. Being so good at it, seriously, that you come back and you're back. You're fully there. You're on the scene. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, of course, I worked hard. I was like, I went. I worked with a vocal coach, and I trained every day. Um, I worked with my uncle John from Napoli to get the Italian accent right. Like I was really working yeah but that the, there is a lot of natural ability that goes Thank into you. it it's and true, yeah. and especially we go back to live performance mm-hmm. you have this this aura and this energy about you that just i mean obviously you're a helen hayes recipient you you have a, a theater background so there's so there's that obviously once that's in you it doesn't go away but there is a tremendous natural ability that that uh, lends itself to to your resurgence and success. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I was I was born with natural talent. Um, you do have to hone it because I'm a voice teacher as well. And so people come to me and they're like, "Oh, if you're not born with natural talent, can you sing?" Absolutely. You can build a voice just like you can build any muscle. Right. There's a uh, chance. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wait, you're serious? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 There's a chance, bro. Tr- you just have to work on it every day. That's the common denominator. Where you're whether you're born with natural talent or not you have to order to improve your voice you just have to exercise every day it's like it's a muscle you're exercising them they're just very small little muscles and you're exercising them i used so. to i used to deny the opportunity to randomly sing places just because you know it's like well if i'm if i'm not getting paid uh-huh. you know i should i should i be should i just get up and open my mouth but i don't do that anymore because i realize the importance of continuing just yeah. do it every opportunity you have sure to vocalize absolutely but you should get paid <laughs> like no, no, no one no, should no. work I, for free just, I, <laughs> I do just, yeah. Make a yeah. living. Like, i i do <laughs> but i mean like if ra- i mean the yeah. random you know hey sal you want to get up and do a song i i don't say no i go sure right right right, right. you know if the conditions are, are right sure yeah. sure i go sure that's you know, nice. That's nice of you. Well, it, it's nice of me. It's, <laughs> no, no, it, it's it's because of that. You want to keep exercising that that yeah. muscle and yeah. and keep at it. Yep. Um, I actually have a prediction. Yes. I have to cut you off. I just don't want to forget. Please. Um, um, I actually have like a prediction. I know it sounds nuts. I've told you this off like camera, but she's gonna be in like a movie one day. Oh, she that's has my dream. this perfectly <laughs> casted look. Thank you. And um, like, I mean, I'm telling you, she's gonna be like one of those war girls in like a '40s movie, <sighs> like when they're going off to war, like or something. I, I don't know. I just see it. I completely yeah. see it. Or like, I want to be in like the jazz, like in the jazz club or a Copacabana, like the '20s. Yeah. yeah, really cool. I was in the Irishman. I think I told you that. Yes, yeah. wait, wait. which is really cool. Oh, really? I keep on, I keep on forgetting that every time you tell me she was in the Irishman. Yeah, like background, but still. That's I so was, cool. Though. I was like featured background. You were in a Scorsese movie. Y- which Scorsese, Scorsese eventually is going to expire, and there's <laughs> only going to be a s- certain amount of ex- Scorsese movies made, I know. and you're in one of them. It was yeah. a dream come true because I was on set for 14 hours with Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, Bobby Cannavale, Harvey Keitel, Ray Romano, and wow. we're all talking like we were friends. I mean, Wait, you were Robert talking with all of them? <laughs> Robert Jr. doesn't speak. Yeah, Joe Pesci was hanging out. He, he came over to everybody's table and was like, how's it going? How's the steak? Because we were in a restaurant scene. And he's like, is it cold? You don't want to eat too much of that. It was sitting in the back for too long kind of thing. Like, Ray Romano came over and he's like, hey, how's it going, guys? Like, isn't this crazy? We're on the set with Robert De Niro? Because he was, <laughs> like, his mind was blown that he was on set with Robert De Niro. And right. The only person who didn't speak to us was Rob Bobby. They called him Bob. Like that. Bob. Because... 
he's very, very focused, very much a method actor, and he has to stay in the zone, and he doesn't make eye contact. I finally was able to make eye contact with him at the 14th hour <laughs> when everyone was tired. Joe Pesci was, like, laying in the booth sleeping, and I was like, and he finally smiled, and he smiled at me, <laughs> and I was like, yes, I got to smile. <laughs> what did Al Pacino do? So, oh, he wasn't in that scene. Oh, okay, okay. He wasn't in that scene, unfortunately, so I didn't meet him, but... All, all, a lot of great ones are in the scene. So, wow, you in the Irishman? This is, that's that's really cool. cool. I'm getting, I'm getting like goosebumps. Thank you. And they picked me out like from a row of girls because I looked so 50s, and I don't have any plastic surgery, so I look more like natural. And I'm pale, so it was good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. There's a reason yeah. why they pick that, and I yeah. just have it stuck in my head as someone who wants to be like a filmmaker. Like I'd cast you right away. Like you, you, you fit that role. Thank you. Perfectly. I appreciate that. You're that casting director? No. <laughs> if you were to play uh, a jazz singer yes. in a movie, in a biopic, yeah. who would it be and why? <gasps> Great question, Seth. Oh, my God. Thank you. Wow. Jeez. So I, it's hard because the people I would like to play, I don't really look like them. That I mean, that doesn't matter. I mean, so obviously I want to play Connie Francis. Matter. She's not a jazz singer, but I would love to play Connie Francis. And I'm trying to work on making that a Broadway show. We'll talk about that later. But um, but like Doris Day, Lena Horne, obviously Ella Fitzgerald's my favorite, but I could never play her for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> and Edie Gourmet, I could probably pull off an Edie. Rosemary Clooney, maybe. Rosemary Clooney, oh, love her, yeah. but they were all blondes, you know. But I could That's dye okay. my hair. I That's dye. hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't you can't pull off Ella Fitzgerald for more reasons <laughs> than hair. <laughs> you think you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely Rosemary is a famous one of my a uh, favorite one of mine. Doris Day, um, yeah, Connie Francis. Who else? But you got to um, pick one. Oh, um, <laughs> all three. Oh, I know. Okay, <laughs> if I'm gonna pick one, it's going to be. Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting her name. Louis Prima, Keely Smith. Keely Smith. She has one of my favorite voices, and we kind of look similar. We had the dark-haired Bob, and she plays very deadpan, you know. You hear that, John Viola? So. <laughs> Keely Smith. We found our yeah. Keely Smith. That's right, Keely Smith. Yeah. So uh, John Viola asked me the same question mm -hmm. the other day, and we we figured Louis Prima. He has he asked me the question. Yes. And there's so many things I love about Louis Prima. I had so many reasons. What do you love about Keely Smith? Well, I love the shtick that she had with with Louis, and that they created this really one of a kind show that doesn't exist today. Right. right? It was um, improvisation. It was acting. It was comedy they had an, a real relationship in real life so it was very believable um and it was perf like a perfect example of italian america on stage right a real it chemistry so a real cool. yeah so cool it's like you had a you had an eye into their relationship yeah playing out on stage yes it was so cool i loved it oh and a little funny story jerry bruno used to play with them a lot mm. a legendary bassist and i was fortunate enough to sing at a jazz club with Bucky Pizzarelli, the guitarist. Wow. And Jerry Bruno was there, but I didn't know it was Jerry Bruno at the time. And I walked in, and uh, the owner of the restaurant was like, hey, Vanessa, guess what? I'm like, what, Arnie? He's like, the bassist wants to sleep with you. I'm like, ew. Ugh. I was like, ew. And he's like, it's Jerry Bruno, and he's 90. I'm like, aw. <laughs> <laughs> like, my reaction just changed. Ew. Aw. <laughs> Wow. It was, it, it was fun. But yeah, I would love to just, I love that whole supper club. I know you you love that vibe too. Me too. That era. And people sometimes tell me like, why do, you, why do you still do this? Like you're stuck in a time warp. Why don't you do modern stuff? And I'm just like, no, I really love this stuff. But well, like, who's going to do this? Exactly. We have to carry the torch. Speaking of your performance career. Yes. As, as of uh, to date. Uh, what is your favorite, what has been your best experience performing live? Oh, my God. Best experience. So this is going to sound like a brown nose, but it's totally not. It was opening for you at the Paramount. Are because you kidding? They were, it was, there were so many people there, and they really loved it. Like, I don't think I've performed in front of that many Italian-Americans who, in a theater, and it's the experience of the theater is just unlike any other like imagine like having 400 people out there like all 
clapping. It was just the energy was really cool. Like I've performed at festivals and stuff, but you know they're they're eating sausage and pepper. They're walking around. They're not like a hundred percent paying attention to you. And so that was really really cool. Wow, thank you. You're welcome. That's <laughs> tremendous. I mean it. You you that's where you belong in a in a very meaningful way. And I know I keep going back to when we first started this conversation. But you have that, that's your energy, is you have this great performer energy. Now I know where it comes from. You, you have a musical theater background. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you just, you really have a way of capturing the crowd that I don't think a lot of people have the ability to do. Especially oh. people who stepped away for 10 years to, to, you know, to do life. Yeah. Were you married at the time when you left? Actually, it was my husband who encouraged me to leave. Okay, that's um, great. Yeah, yeah. and because uh, I, when we first met, we were very young. Um, he didn't know I was a singer, and I said, "He's like, what do you like to do?" I'm like, "Oh, I like to sing," and he's like, "Oh, me too. I sing around the campfire with my family and <laughs> in the shower." And I'm like, "Well, it's a little different with me." <laughs> and, and then we, we went to like karaoke, and I sang at last. I think it was, and he was like oh, shit, you can really sing. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, why aren't you doing this full time? And I was like, well, because my, you know, it's more of a hobby. You know, my parents said it's not a real job. And he's like, no, 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 you have to do this. And he pushed me to book shows while I was uh, in corporate America. And he's like, your goal is to do 10 this year. And then I booked 20. Wow. wow. The next year I booked 40. And then it just became. I thought so there was no way I could like this guy more. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he is pretty great. That's amazing. He's, he is pretty great. And, uh, it, be it became, it got to the point where I was an executive at PepsiCo. I had a team of people underneath me. I w had 40 bookings, 40 to 50 a year traveling around the country. So, like, I would, you know, close my laptop on Friday and then get on a plane and then come back on Monday. And it was just so much on my body. Like, I got bronchitis four times that year because oh because PepsiCo is like a nine to eight kind of job. It's very competitive, very cutthroat, and uh, a lot of work. And uh, Joe was complaining that he doesn't see me el enough and we didn't have like a connection. And he's like, you've got to make a change. And I was like, I think then it's giving up PepsiCo because I can't give up my singing career. It would kill me. And he's like, all right, I'll support you while you get on your feet. The, you know, the first however long it takes. And we did it. I love hearing stories like that. Thanks. I love because <laughs> at the end of the day, like to have someone in your corner who really believes it makes all the difference it really does it really does and he's literally you see him he comes oh, yeah. to every show every show with there. my backpacks <laughs> and he <laughs> sets up all my equipment sometimes he, we, we bring the speaker system and he has to lug oh yeah Dunga Din. yeah <laughs> i see him walking to and from the car in the rain <laughs> Everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, so he travels so, with you to mm -hmm. every show. Yeah, most to most of the ones I guess that he can yeah. he can make it yeah. to. But yeah. he is he is right there with her. Wow. She gets out of the car. He moves her wardrobe in. <laughs> everything. He's he's. <laughs> yeah. That's really sweet. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 more than that. He he really does believe in you. He really does believe in this. He does. Which leads me to the question: What did your parents have to say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so mind you. I was making two hundred thousand dollars a year when I left. Two hundred thousand. Yeah, and they were like, "I was like, okay, so I think I've decided I'm going to leave PepsiCo because I was still doing well in my singing career. I was booking forty shows a year. I was like, I think it's time." Joe and I talked about it, and they were just like, <laughs> "Quiet, <laughs> quiet." And I was like, "How do you feel?" They're like, oh, "I don't know." How are you going to feel making less money? You're not used to that. And I don't know. It's scary. And what if this? What if that? What if that? I'm like, guys, you see how tenacious I am. Just trust me. You see how talented? Like, it's not just talent. I'm also a business person. You know, like, I'm business minded. You see what I've done with Italian jazz and, right. like, and you're not very a, niche. you're not an impractical <laughs> person. Right. Exactly. You've, you've thought about this. Exactly. You, you got it. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm going to. You know, you have bills to pay and all that. Right. Right. And I'm like, I'll teach on the side, like, as a backup. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were still like really skeptical, and it was so funny. It, like my dad called me on the, <laughs> like on the side after. I think my mom was just scared because she's a woman, and she's like, "I don't want you to ever depend on a man," which I understand because in her generation they didn't go to college and they have to depend on the guy. So I think she was scared. But my dad called me like after that conversation, like on the sly, and he was like, "Nunu, uh, I like what you're doing. Keep going." <laughs> Nunu. That's my nickname. <laughs> Nunu. 
Really? <laughs> and then uh, my mom came around eventually. Now she's like, oh, you're doing great. But she was scared. And I can understand that as a as a female. I so. firmly believe 100%. And you can tell your parents this. Um, I believe that the way to be more successful is to actually be an entrepreneur, which is what you're doing. Yeah. It's entrepreneurial. Um at the end of the day, that's the way to make the most money because you'll have more freedom of life. You'll have, you like, you know, you you already made it, but if you make it even bigger than you already do now, it'll end up being more more than PepsiCo. Yeah, hopefully. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd yeah. Be great. Well, you so, match you match that that drive. Yeah. and that that um, you know, like you said, is a very cutthroat business, and here you are, very quickly rising to the top of that. So sure. obviously the the uh, the mentality is there, right? You know the, the, you're you're sharp. You're, you know, it's just that you got it. Now, now you can really run with it because you have something that, when you when you rise to the top of a, of you know a marketing position, middle management at a big corporation, you have something that a lot of people don't have. You have you have either some sort of natural ability or some sort of inborn drive right. to get somewhere that they just can't, to break yeah. through something that they can't. It's true. Now you have, you really have something in your in your vocal talent that a lot of people do not have. You already have this leg up. And then on top of that, this entrepreneurial spirit, this, this you know, this fight, this drive. Yeah. And that's, that's really what you need. Thank you. And That's a little a bit of luck. Ego boost. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, true. A little bit of luck. Yes, exactly. But yeah. you've but you've had that. Thanks. Speaking of which, it's brought you, besides the Irishman, besides in, in acting roles, it's brought you around so many other successful people. Uh you just are coming off of an event. With Catherine Narducci. Yes. Yeah. Tell Very us cool. about this. Yeah. And this is so funny how we met. We met in the pandemic because I fell in love with her painting of Judy Garland. Because a lot of people don't know she's a beautiful. Very like, talented painter. Very talented artist, um, actress, uh, producer, writer, etc. And um, I kept <laughs> like messaging her on Instagram. And we were Instagram friends because she was following me. She liked what I did with the Italian American music. I was following her. And I was like, so is that Judy still available? How much is it? Is that Judy still available? How much is it? <laughs> and I kept like following up and she's like, you obviously really want it. So <laughs> I will sell it to you. And she was bored during the pandemic. So she literally drove it to my house in Ossining. She's like, I just want to see where other people live. She's like, I'll take it to you. I was like, really? I'm like, Catherine Notucci is going to drive to my house. <laughs> and it was so funny. And uh, we just bought a new house and uh, she came and I, it was my first painting. I hung it up and uh, that's how we met. And then I was, I like to produce a lot of events as well, as well in Italian America. And one event I produced that's, I did the fifth annual version this year that Rosemary filmed was Festa della Donna, the Festival of the Woman for International Women's Day. And I just celebrated Italian American females who are promoting the culture through the arts, like dancers, comedians, spoken word, um, opera, me. <laughs> and, uh, um, I asked if she would be our guest of honor because she is a really powerful Italian American female in you know the world of film and acting and art, and she was also like the very first female grand marshal in San Gennaro. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. I can't believe they never had a female grand marshal before. I was like, what? Too many guys so, waiting in that line. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. I can't believe no, it. Too many guys were owed that position. Wait, too many it's favors. True. Yeah, you yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm you sure. That's true. <laughs> and one thing that you really hit home with and that hit home with me um, about your about your event, I really wish I could have been there. Um, I was actually away at a friend's at a friend's bachelor party, but um I feel like Italian American girls are very underrepresented. Yes. 100%, especially in in the influencing like, you know, world that we're in. Yeah. Uh like, you know, I feel like it's very male dominated and trust me, I'm not like and I'm not saying this in like a bad way. I'm not a social justice warrior in <laughs> any way. Right. So from from me to say that, like, like you know, it really means I believe it. So Yeah. I, I really Even like love the what you did. Of the Italian clubs, like the Columbus Citizens Foundation, for example, they have their very first female president, Marion Pardo. In like how, however many years they've been really yeah right? I didn't even know that yeah so like all the Italian establishments are still very male you know heavy um, but that's another reason why I do what I do because I want to break through as 
an influencer in the Italian American community. So I love it. I love it. We need more of it. <laughs> Is this also positive? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I try. <laughs> are you uh, are you planning more events that we could look out for as yes. far as as far as this goes? Thank you for asking, Sal. Um, yeah. So I have. So in addition to my Italian jazz stuff, I also do jazz proper and a lot of other tangential kind of shows. So um, so April is Jazz Appreciation Month, and so I am doing a Prohibition jazz show. Um, on April 6th at Chelsea Table and Stage, which is, which is a beautiful new venue. They opened in the pandemic, I believe, um, in New York City on 26th Street. And um, it's going to be like the rise of jazz and the story of prohibition, like through the 20s and 30s music. It's really fun, really swanky. Of course, I dress in flapper attire because I love getting dressed in costume as a thespian. <laughs> and, uh, and then I also have an April 12th show at the Poli Club at the Palace Theater in... Um, in West uh, Waterbury, Connecticut, Connecticut. <laughs> and uh, that's going to be a 7 and a 9 p.m. performance with my jazz trio. So come out and check it out. It'll be fun. And you'll also be performing at the NEF Gala. Yes. On Thursday, April 18th, I was invited for the first time I, to, to perform at the NEF Gala in New York City. I performed in Washington, D.C. back in 2017 or 18. So I'm super excited to perform for the first time in New York City at Cipriani's. Wow. So, yeah. Big venue, a lot of eyes. Yeah. You might get discovered there. I'm so scared, but I'm but excited. <laughs> are, are you recording anytime soon? <laughs> um recording a new album? Yeah. Um so I'm still kind of like trying to recover from my my, my 2022 Jazzy Italian album. Um cuz you know each one is like 40,000 each. I haven't figured out a way <laughs> to do it cheaper unless like you're married to a sound engineer. Maybe I should do that. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, so my next one, I th I'm thinking of diving deep into the Harry Warren songbook because um, I just did a Harry Warren tribute and met his um, his great grandson from L.A. And he was born Salvatore Antonio Guarania in Brooklyn, New wow. York. Wow. And he was a very prolific Italian American composer. He was like the equivalent of Gershwin, and people don't know of him. Like he wrote At Last. He wrote I Only Have Eyes for You, Chattanooga Choo Choo, Really? Forty uh, Second Street. Oh yeah, it's like an eight hundred song like repertoire. And um, so I did a tribute with him at the Columbus for him at the Columbus Citizens Foundation. And so I think I want to do my next album just diving deep into his music. Um, and then I have another idea just doing like the ladies of jazz as well. So how do you decide on a theme for a record? That's a great question, Sal. Um, I've been fortunate in that it sort of just comes to me. Um, so I was touring when I was at PepsiCo with a jazz trio and I would sing like a repertoire of just jazz standards. Like I had like 100 to 150 deep list of songs that I learned, which was a great experience to get my jazz chops. Um but then when my grandfather died shortly thereafter, um, you know, we were best friends. So I missed him and I was inspired to do something that had a little bit more personal meaning to me. And so I decided to I, I was dra actually driving my car singing Aldi La and I was like, Aldi La del Bene Più Prezioso. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I want to reinvent the classic songs that grandpa taught me with jazz arrangements. And that gave birth to my album Italiana Fresca. And then when I was touring the country with that uh, album, I performed in New Orleans, which I love so much, and I learned how deep the roots are with Italian Americans and jazz. And uh, so I decided to take that song and record that in a refreshed way. And then I just go through history with all the Italian Americans and jazz that made their mark, like Henry Mancini, Harry Warren, Louis Prima, Chick Corea. People don't know he was Calabrese, um, John Pizzarelli, et cetera. And that was my second album, Jazzy Italian. Um, and from that, I learned how much Harry Warren did. And then that's leading to the next album. So it's kind of like it just comes to me as I go through. Yeah. I want to go to New Orleans. It's one of my favorite places. It's like it's like the place for jazzy Italians. Is it <laughs> like a dangerous me, as I feel say? so. Uh, so the city proper has gone down a little bit, just like New York City. And there's a lot of carjackings, a lot of theft, robberies, shootings, and stuff. Yes, as long as you don't but, drive a Hyundai, Kia, or yeah. Dodge. 
uh, V8 Dodge powered, you know, V8 powered Dodge car. You're good. Yeah. You're not going to get your car stolen. But if you just take like an Uber from one destination to the next, don't wander down any shady side streets, right. you'll be fine. Take you know? a page out of my book. Drive a 20 year old yeah. Lincoln Town car and you won't get robbed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yep. Cool. Right, so, Vanessa. Yes. This has been fabulous. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't I don't want it to end. I want to I want to <laughs> see you again. Aww, Where yes. can I go? Yay. If I am looking <laughs> to see Vanessa Rachi perform. If you want to see me perform, you can go to my website at vanessaracci.com, which is v a n e s s a r a c c i.com and you can see my so- show schedule or you can sign up for my mailing list so that you find out when I'm performing. My parents friends always say, "Oh, just call me." I can't do that with everyone unfortunately, so please sign up from my mailing list um, or you can follow me on Instagram, Spotify, uh, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook um, at Vanessa Rachi and listen to my music. You can buy it on Amazon. You can get a physical CD if you still have a CD player or just get the MP3s. And I'm fine if you listen to it on Spotify, too, as long as you're listening. <laughs> on behalf of myself, Anthony Rowe, we appreciate you coming on the Breaking Bread podcast. Thank you. Thanks We'd so much for having, having me. This was so much fun. There's gonna come a day where you're gonna be in the movies. I'm telling you. <laughs> I love you. this. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. say it again. You never yes. know. Stranger things have happened. Yeah. How many Scorsese <laughs> movies have you been in? <laughs> I, I love this. We're gonna put it out there. We're gonna manifest it and yeah. it'll happen. Yes. Yeah, I love sure. <laughs> you're already there, Vanessa. Thank you, Sal. We're, we're glad to have known you when. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. The best ego boost ever. <laughs>